Hi! If you search the interwebs for LCD projects, most hits are Arduino or cell phone repair. But LCD screens existed long before either technology, and I know that the ROM in these things contains ASCII characters. So I wondered if it was possible as a hobbyist to forego the microcontroller or computer entirely. After breadboarding it, I realized, turns out you can. With breadboarding out of the way, it was time for a proper wooden enclosure. I don't really do any woodworking in my tiny apartment, so all I had on hand was this Dremel 200. It isn't really the ideal tool for the task, given the thickness of the wood, but it did the job. Next, I drilled holes for the eight data switches, the enable momentary push button, as well as the toggle switch for pin 5 which tells the LCD to accept data inputs when switched high, and instruction inputs when switched low. Contrast is only really something I'd adjust once, so I didn't bother drilling a hole for the 10K potentiometer, which connects to pin 3 of the LCD module and is used to control the contrast, so I just left it inside the box. I was tempted to dive into my box of salvaged wall warts, half of which produce 5 volts DC. I really like the ones where I can lop off and resolder the rare or outdated connectors like these, since they'd be useless otherwise. But the good folks at Gizmo's Radio Shack down the street sold me this nifty screw terminal barrel plug, which is great because you can use it for whatever voltage you want, and I wouldn't have to have a big length of cable to deal with. And I suppose this is a bit gratuitous since I already have a barrel jack, but I wanted an extra switch anyway. Now, I've always hated those tiny slide switches that a lot of hobbyists use. They always felt cheap, so I went for a standard wall switch instead. It only cost 99 cents at Ace Hardware. Toggle switches are by far the most fun to use, but they're also ideal for this kind of enclosure, as they're pretty solidly built, and they come with a normal washer, a tooth washer, and a hex nut. That said, pliers help. Now, to make the positive and negative rails, we use the outer terminals of each switch. I found that 20 gauge wire was just the right mix of bendiness and sturdiness in this situation. Here I'm taking care to grapevine the wire up and down for added rigidity before I solder it. The 20 gauge just manages to fill the eye of each terminal too, so I left a little extra length since that would be a great place to add a little extra solder. And I gave it a little pinch just to know where to start stripping. I really get a lot out of my quad hands, which here are holding the uh, jumper head right about where it meets the terminal of the toggle switch. And I have my 15 watt fume extractor sucking away all the rosin. In fact, the quad hands were so useful that it actually misled me for a while, and I began soldering male to male jumper wires to the LCD module's pins. But I realized it might be more useful to have female to male wires instead, especially if I wired something incorrectly. I used 1 8 inch polyolefin heat shrink tubing, which conformed nicely to the joints when I held a lighter next to them. I soldered a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor across the terminals of the enable button, hoping that it would be enough to debounce the circuit. It doesn't really help. 
In a video last year, I talked about this quick and dirty SR latch that I made from a quad Norgate IC. And I thought of modifying this to use it as a debounce solution for this project. But I realized it is kind of big, and then, more importantly, there are specific debouncer ICs, like the MC14490. The third hand saved the day again, when I had to extend the outermost female to male jumper wires to reach data switches 0 and 7. I soldered each male pin to the middle terminal of each switch. So that's it for construction. Set it to instruction mode with switches 0 to 3 set to high. Only then do you get the blinky cursor. You can't turn it on and then flip the switches, otherwise you get nothing. Now I have my list of ASCII characters with their binary codes. Let's type a greeting, shall we? First, we set the LCD module to data input mode thusly. Then we look at our little chart and enter in the inputs accordingly. There you have it, an H. How's it, how's it? Several commands didn't quite work. Here the simple delete command instead yields this shonky business. ASCII has a long history that predates this particular device, so I spent some time marking up the instruction sheets with what certain input sequences actually result in. One interesting pair of commands that did work was the shift function, with toggle switch number 2 controlling the direction of the switch. Great feature! I'd be remiss if I didn't mention just how tricky it was to get this little box to work right. There's no delete function to speak of, and so many times I get to the last character in a row only to get a bounce when I hit the enable button. But hey, this project did teach me a lot about how these things work, and I've included links to the data sheets, instruction sheets, and other valuable resources below. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.